Hiya, I'm going to talk about your um, puppy's first day and night um, with you as a new owner um, and how important these things are um, to creating a bond. So first of all, um, I'm going to tell you about the dog's sense of smell. Really sounds irrelevant here, doesn't it? But actually, it's really, really not. Um, the sense of smell is a thousand times stronger for a dog. So what happens is um, usually the breeder will say, OK, you can have a blanket or a toy that smells of the litter to go home with you. Um, so that's great. Um, or also what I do um, is I tell people to bring a T-shirt that the owner has slept in, in their bed and in their children's bed if they've got kids as well, um, for at least a week and hand it to me in like a sealed bag. And then you give it to the puppy a few days before they're due to go home to the new owner. And what that does is that allows scent memories to be built up with this puppy. So the puppy already recognises household smells from you. Okay, so a dog's nose is a thousand times more um, powerful than humans. Um, scent memories for humans is exactly the same for dogs, but it's actually it's actually a lot more for a dog. So have you ever been to a place and you smelt something and you went, oh God, that reminds me of this time, or it reminds me um, like lavender. Um, I lost my mum a few years ago, but the smell of lavender always makes me remind, um, it reminds me of my mum. So whenever I smell lavender, you think, oh, you know, you, you think of a good time that you had, like building lavender bags with your mum or whatever when you're a kid. Um, so it's actually the same for dogs. Um, so they have, they, it's called scent memory building. Um, and they remember good things happen with a smell. So smells are really important. So the smell of you and the smell of their litter is important for when you bring that puppy home. Okay, so when you bring your puppy home in the early days, um, it's, it, sorry, in your first day, it's, you need a settling in period. Um, so what you're gonna do is, one second, you're gonna walk through your door. This is our Dre. He's our, uh, he's our stooge dog for dog training classes. Um, this is your puppy and you're gonna carry him through into your house and you're just gonna sit on the floor with your puppy and you're just gonna make them feel really, really secure. So you're just gonna just sit there and just let them go at their own pace and stroke them and talk to them nicely. Um, eventually, your puppy might want to move away from you so this is good. So you're not restricting them or you're not having all your kids flooding in and going, oh, there's a puppy, there's a puppy, wow. Because this puppy is going to be so scared when it walks through your door. Anxiety is going to be through the roof. Um, so what you want to do is make everything nice and calm and let your puppy move away at its own pace. So you're going to sit on the floor and let your puppy just sort of sniff around and have a look. Um, yeah, he's a cute one, isn't he? He's called Dre. He's called Dre. He is. He's a big puppy. He's a big Rottweiler puppy, but he's actually really important for uh, for building, um, <laughs> for doing dog classes. Anyway, um, so imagine your puppy is a toddler um, and you've just adopted a new toddler. Um, somebody hands you a one-year-old child. Now, you wouldn't go to a one-year-old child. Oh, there you go. Now get on with it and then walk away, would you? You're trying to build a bond with, with your puppy. So you're trying to make them feel as secure as possible and you're taking the place of the mother. So they feel secure because they're around all their other litter mates, and their mum and the smells of everything else. So hopefully you've got your smelly t-shirt and something from the breeder. Um, so you can carry that around with you, with your puppy and they can smell everything and the scent is, is going to keep them from crashing over, crashing over the threshold. Um, so once your puppy's moved away from you, you can use chicken. This is why I said um, in the group earlier, I said, uh, cook some chicken, get ready for um, bringing your puppy home, have this cooked chicken, because the chances are, unless it's from my litter, <laughs> they haven't experienced cooked chicken yet and the smell of it is just, it's too irresistible for a dog. So you can use chicken sort of scattered about on your floor for them to find. And when I say cooked chicken, I mean 
a quarter of your little finger. That's how tiny these little pieces need to be because you don't want to you don't want to fill them up. So you just scatter some chicken around the floor. Um, so you can use them. You can use the chicken as lures to their bed. So if you've got a crate or if you've got a bed, what you need to do is sort of scatter chicken around around the bed. Um, then you could do like a little pathway up to their bowl and their water area. Um, so you could show them that. Um, the chances are they will need the toilet. Um, so you can take your chicken outside with your puppy, carry them out. Don't try and force them out the door, you know, with um, it just, you don't want to scare them. You can carry them out and just place them on the floor and sit with them and let them sniff because they'll be looking around and they'll be sniffing the air and thinking, what is this place? What is going on? Um, and everything is building up inside there. Their mental bucket is sort of half full at this point. Um, so you can be trying to coax them with chicken. Like, oh, this is a really good place to be. Brilliant. Okay, here's your chicken. Here's your chicken. Um, and, and take them out onto the lawn, scatter t another tiny few pieces um, and watch for them circling round. So dogs, when they need the toilet, They'll be, they'll be sort of head to the floor, sniffing around, <laughs> push. They'll be sniffing and they'll be going like this, spinning around in circles. That's a sign of a dog needs the toilet. So that's when, if you're in the house, that's when, oh, it's toilet time, it's toilet time. So always call it a name for toilet time. So um, you can do, any, you can say anything really, but as long as it's consistent. So I say go for a wee. Um, and that's all I say to puppies, say nothing else. Go for a wee, go for a wee, go for a wee. Puppy goes for a wee. Yay! Treat, 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 treat. So jackpot treat. So yay, good. And then get the puppy indoors. It's important for toilet training, as soon as they've gone for a wee, to get them back inside so that they know they've just been out to go to the toilet and now you're coming back inside. Okay, so they've done what you want out there because if you let them stay out there, then they're gonna to want to play out there. And that association has just been lost. What you've just done with toilet training is just let them get on with it and play outside. And it hasn't really built that, okay, I go outside for the toilet and then I come back in and you know I get lots of treats. Okay, so we've done the toileting outside um, and I'm gonna get lady for this part. Okay, so if you're using a crate, for the first time with your puppy, um, you don't know possibly how much crate training that breeder's done. Um, and the chances are the breeder has definitely not shut the door on the puppies when they've been in the crate. Hopefully, if you've had a good breeder that is, um, because some breeders will lock them in or, or you know, um, intentionally as probably not a nice thing, but good breeders will build crate training into um, their socialization and desensitization <coughs> program. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you get your puppy to explore the crate and make them happy with the crate. So um, none of my dogs use crates by the way. The lady's really not used to being in this crate. This is a great time to show you this kind of training because um, I, I just I hate the sight of them, <laughs> to be honest. I like beds and I've got beds everywhere else. Um, okay, so what you do is you'd have your smelly t-shirt, smelly t-shirt inside there. You'd have something from the breeder inside there. A nice big, a nice big toy as well, so they can cuddle up to it. Um, dog safe, by the way, it has to be dog safe. Um, so then what you do is you can build up a little trail towards the crate and then you can get them to go inside it by pushing that food in the crate and it's good they put a paw in the crate and it's good 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 she's got two paws in so she's not quite she's like mm, what's this about Good. So you keep tossing chicken in there. So the longer they're in there, the more chicken they get. Okay, so that's good. In your crate. Oh, missed it. In your crate. In your crate. In your crate. In your crate. 
and you cry. And you cry. Come on. Come on. <laughs> See, she's not getting fully in. She's like, she's, you know, just investigating it at the minute. So you just keep feeding them until they feel comfortable. Good. 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 Just keep feeding them. Let them come in and out at their own pace. It's important not to shut that door because you don't want your dog to be fearful of you. What you need to do is build trust with your dog. Um, especially in the first two days, your dog needs to have trust in you and that you need to be their superhuman. You need to be their hero. Um, because at the minute, they've got nobody else but you to rely on and understand. Um, so I'm just going to keep feeding her in a minute. Because she can smell all this chicken up here. And it's not fair, is it? Um, <laughs> in your crate. So you can build in your crate or in your bed or whatever. Tossing chicken in. In your crate. And um, be a good aim, not like me. So your crate needs to be like a little den with a blanket so that they feel like they're in a little snug, secure area because actually dogs love dens. Um, so you always put a blanket on the top of it, always make it nice and cuddly. Um, you know, blankets, smelly t-shirts, um, a dog safe toy in your crate. Good. Good. Okay, so puppies sleep 18 to 20 hours um, a day, approximately. Um, and they sleep a lot when they're puppies because this is when all their growing happens. Um, when puppies sleep, the growth hormone is activated and that's how they grow. Um, and they're also storing and banking all their memories from the, pre, you know, from the day whilst they're sleeping. So they do a lot of processing while they're sleeping. Um, and it's always good, if you've got children especially, always let your puppy sleep. Tell your children never to wake your puppy up. Um, don't disturb them, don't go near them. Um, especially when they're in the crate, by the way, um, or in their bed. So um, when you've got children, you, um, it doesn't matter what age they are, um, but especially for the younger ones. Um, when your puppy is in the bed, that's no-go area your child is never allowed to go up to the crate, stick their hands in, or try and pull the puppy out of the bed, um, or move them around and want to play with them or and coax them out. Um, your puppy must be able to make choices on when it can and can't sleep. Um, so always let your puppy make choices. Um, never allow them to be forced along, never force them to do anything, um, because that builds fear. Also, it doesn't just build fear, it builds, um, you know, a certain amount of resource guarding um, because the bed becomes their little cave and their little getaway and they feel safe and secure in there. Um, but when then children come, come along, children start going, oh yeah, there's a toy, there's a toy, right, I'm taking it all off you. Come and play with it, come and play with it. And the puppy doesn't see that as, oh, my owners want to play with me. They say, okay, well, the, it's taking my toys away from me. And, and that's mine. And the scavenger instinct in a dog is strong. Um, so what you've just done is you've just removed your, your dog's personal possessions. Um, so to a dog, when they've collected something and put it in their bed, that's their special thing. Um, so you shouldn't try and remove things from their bed, especially when they're not in there. Um, and if it's, um, if it's something of yours, by the way, which it probably will be, a slipper, um, your underwear, socks, um, whatever it is, to, to, to remove that from them, always be always be on guard with food. So always have food in your hand and go, ah, oh, and you put the food in the mouths like this and you're feeding them and you're slowly getting the other thing and keep feeding them, keep feeding them and then the thing goes behind your back. And by the time you've got that out of the crate and feeding them at the same time, they won't realise what you've done and you've made it so much more fun. And that's how you remove something safely from a puppy. Um, or for an older dog, actually. Any age dog, um, that applies to. But um, for your puppy's first day, you must allow them to be nice and calm and, you know, everything is chilled and you're building a bond. Um, so the first night, if you want sleep, 
you you must take your crate and your bed upstairs and put it next to your bed um, if you want sleep this is what you should do if you want your puppy to feel safe and secure and bonded with you this is also what you should do um, it doesn't mean to say they'll sleep there for the rest of their lives it doesn't mean that at all it means whilst they're a toddler that little baby they feel like they're not alone because remember they had been with their mums and their litter and you just snatch them away and you, you're going to stick them in a room by themselves switch the light off gone they've got nobody um so you must be that safe and secure safety net for them you you know make them feel like they're <coughs> secure um, and not scared and that really makes me sad because um, I see a lot of people saying well I put the puppy downstairs I turned off the light you know I didn't make any fuss um, you know I put them in the crate and said night night and I turned off the light and I walked out the room and I could hear them crying but um, what I did was I let the puppy cry out so that's a big no-no crying for a puppy is just trying to tell you that there is something wrong um, they're scared. They're not saying, I want attention, I want attention. Um, you know, you're not rewarding them uh, and, and training them that every time they cry, you'll come because they're not a human. That this, the association is not the same. Um, you're, you're making them feel secure by going to say, okay, you know, you're scared. Um, you know, sit there and stroke them. Don't let them cry it out. Um, what that causes, um, it's a blueprint for the rest of their lives, actually. It's an actual blueprint. Anything that goes on before 16 weeks old is a blueprint for the rest of their lives and they will remember it and act upon that same emotion for the rest of their lives. So um, what you've got to do is, is, is not let them cry out. You've got to make them feel good again and please take them to your room and just, you know, and settle them by just not even talking. Just put your hand down, just stroke them, um, you know, and just, just do what you have to to make them fall asleep but just don't give them a lot of interactive um like speaking talking to them just just be soothing and calm and stroke them um and your husbands will thank you for it <laughs> because it's always the husbands that go oh the dog's crying downstairs you know do something about it um but that is the way to deal with it you know if you take them to your room you, you, you're gonna have sleep um, when they wake up in the middle of the night, it's usually because they need the toilet. So again, I, if you've got stairs in your room, don't let them go up and down stairs, especially don't let them walk down the stairs because it's really bad for them. Um, it's even worse than going up the stairs. Um, so you carry them, you put them outside, um, toilet time, say nothing, go to the toilet, brilliant, pick it up, straight back into its bed, strokes, go to sleep, fine nothing else nothing else more than that um so what also obviously for sleep times you need your smelly t-shirt something from the breeder in there um you just want to make it as much as possible comfortable as possible to make them feel like they're back at that breeder's house with the rest of their litter mates so before i end this video hopefully i've covered everything um, I want to put in some important dog ownership rules. Always smile at your puppy. Smile and use hand signals a lot. So if you want to go out or go in your bed or, you know, or sit or because dogs can't speak English. Um, when you're training them, you think you're training them to the words. but Actually, they're mostly looking at your body language and what you're doing and what you're saying. Um, so use a lot of hand signals. Um, everybody in the family has to be consistent. Um, the same rules apply for everybody. So you have to get everybody on board and make a family plan, right? Okay, when, when this happens, I'm gonna do this. Or when you want them to sit, you only say sit and then you give them food or whatever it is, just be consistent, um, you know, and, and it creates a happier family. Um, so remember, scent drives association. So if you see your puppy looking nervous, um, if I just get the dog here. So a nervous dog is a dog that's body weight is pulled back like this. The ears might roll back here. The mouth will be snapped shut. The eyes will be wide. So whale eye, we call it. 
um, they might sort of lift their paw up in the air and they might just turn away from whatever it is they're fearful of. So that's your opportunity to go grab some chicken and go, oh, it's okay, you know, we're feeding you. We're just, you know, everything's all cool. Make those pieces tiny. Again, you don't want them to only want chicken. You want them to build scent association, but you want them to feel nice and calm. Don't overload them on the first two days. Um, it's important not to take them to every single different room in your house if you can. Um, you know, I know the kids might want to go, oh, yeah, let's take it to my room. I want to show the puppy my room. Oh no, let's take it to the bathroom. Don't do any of that. Um, the first day should be just spent downstairs um, in, in the two rooms that they'll be in, which is probably your kitchen and your living room. Um, obviously the garden, but don't, you know, don't try and walk before they can run. Um, because you just want them to um, keep that mental bucket quite low and quite chilled. Um, accidents will happen. Every time a dog wakes up, it needs the toilet. Remember that rule. They wake up, they step out. It's good to have bells around the gate, by the way. So what I do as a breeder, um, if the puppies are in their pen area, I have a toy piano on the floor. Um, it's a baby toy, um, but as soon as they step on it, it plays a sound. So they step on that, it plays a sound, I'm reacting, I'm opening the door and you're all out for a wee, all at the same time. Um, so what you can do as an owner is you can put, you know, your, your poochie bells, you can attach it to around here. So when your puppy comes out, it makes a noise. So you're automatically going, bang, puppy needs a wee. So, and you take them straight out and that's your toilet training opportunity. Um, so accidents will happen um, and it's important not to scold your dog. Um, say no to, say no to Dre here is exactly like saying no to your own puppy. He doesn't know, he doesn't understand. So no, bad dog. What he does think is, oh, my own has changed the tone of her voice and her body language is different and that's scary. Um, and I don't like that. So what puppies do is they go, oh, don't like that. And they sort of move away from you and they look dead guilty, but dogs don't feel guilt, by the way. It's not an emotion that they have. Um, so they just go, oh, my, my own is scary. I, every time, you know, she, she shouts, that's scary. Um, but they do understand what you do want them to do because you've trained them to do it. So use training opportunities as much as you can. Um, expect no sleep for about four weeks <laughs> um, and you you will do well don't ever expect your dog um, to carry on a great sleeping pattern because all of a sudden one day they could start you know waking up at two in the morning and you just have to be consistent with the right okay let's go outside go to the toilet I'm back in don't talk to them stroke stroke be calm be nice you know everything's cool um, but yeah, you might find yourself going back to the beginning a lot. Um, and that's puppy's first day and night in a nutshell, really. Um, any questions, let me know. Um, and obviously put anything, any queries in the group. Um, one more thing, actually, sorry, I forgot. If you've got other animals, if you've got other dogs, actually, more importantly, and you're bringing a new dog to your home, it's important to keep your older dog out of the way for at least an hour if you can. I know we're in lockdown, so you can't give it to your friend, um, but try and keep them you know, in a different area for about an hour to let your puppy explore by themselves um, so that they feel a sense of security of what, where they are and where everything is so that your puppy knows where to run or where to hide when your dog comes in um, and again, build, you know, scent association. So chicken, chicken, chicken to that dog, chicken to this dog, you know, and try and keep everything really, really calm and nice. Um, and dogs do feel jealousy. So uh, try not to give too much attention to this puppy when your elder dog is about and is looking unhappy. Try and make them both happy at the same time and give them both lots of praise and reward. Um, and that's it. I think I've covered everything. Thank you.